It is crucial to understand the foods we regularly consume. Milk is one of the food items that is consumed by billions of people every day. And even if you don't drink it, you might be consuming it in one way or another. Let's take a closer look at how raw milk is transformed into creamy condensed milk. We will explore how and why raw milk is pasteurized, and you will watch the fascinating process of making cheese from milk. We all know where the milk comes from. Largely, cows produce more than 80% of the total milk, while buffaloes, their sisters, give only 12%, and the rest of the milk is given by sheep and goats. But there is a problem with every pure and fresh raw milk. It contains some harmful bacteria and pathogens. So, it is always boiled before consumption. Boiling milk not just kills microbes, but also extends its shelf life. But still, you cannot store it for a longer time. To store milk for longer time use, you have to pasteurize it. The word pasteurization is named after the French microbiologist Louis Pasteur, whose research found that heating liquids to a specific temperature for a short period effectively destroys pathogenic microorganisms without significantly altering the taste or nutritional value of the product. Since then, the technique has been widely adopted by almost all milk factories. A cow can be typically milked two to three times a day, with milking sessions lasting about five minutes per cow. If the cow is not milked at the right time, it won't be good for the cow's health. Traditionally, cattle are milked by hand. They gently squeeze the udder downward, and milk goes into the container. But there are machines that have made the harvesting process almost automatic. Most of them use a rotary milking parlor. It consists of a circular platform that rotates slowly, allowing multiple cows to be milked simultaneously. Cows enter the rotating platform and are guided into individual stalls. The platform then rotates, bringing each cow into position for milking. As the cow is positioned, milking units are attached to the udder, allowing for a continuous flow of milk into a collection system. Once milking is complete, the unit automatically detaches, and the cow exits the platform, making way for the next cow. Small-medium farms use parallel parlors, which are more cost-effective and easier to manage. The cows stand side by side, and milking is done in batches. It's efficient, cost-effective, and easy to manage, but slightly slower due to the stop-and-go nature of batch milking. In both parallel and rotary milking parlors, workers play a crucial role in ensuring smooth operation, cow comfort, and milk quality. They direct cows into the milking stalls or onto the rotary platform, ensuring a steady flow and preventing congestion. They also clean and disinfect the cow's teats to remove dirt and bacteria, sometimes using pre-milking disinfectant dips or wipes. Most importantly, workers manually or with robotic assistance attach milking clusters to the cow's udders for efficient milking. They check for proper suction, milk flow, and any signs of infection while the cows are being milked. This type of rotary milking parlor requires only two to three workers. A significant amount has been collected for the day. It's time to move it from the farm to a factory. Every day at Western Dairy Transport LLC kicks off before sunrise as their gleaming stainless steel tanker trucks roar to life, hitting the highways to gather fresh milk straight from local farms. Their massive, high-tech refrigerated rigs, specially designed to keep milk perfectly chilled and fresh. Drivers expertly connect giant hoses, swiftly pumping thousands of gallons of creamy goodness into their spotless tanks. Time is critical. The milk must quickly reach factories to stay deliciously fresh. As trucks cruise down scenic roads, dispatchers closely track each journey, ensuring smooth, speedy, and safe deliveries. From farm gate to factory door, Western dairy trucks deliver excellence daily. Upon the arrival of fresh milk at the factory, technicians start their work. In a high-tech lab, samples are tested rigorously for purity, fat content, and bacteria levels. Only milk passing these stringent checks moves forward. 
After all, top quality condensed milk starts with only the finest ingredients. Once approved, the milk flows into enormous stainless steel storage tanks equipped with cutting-edge cooling systems. This high-tech setup ensures the milk stays fresh, pure, and ready for the magical transformation about to unfold. There are two different methods that are used for pasteurization of fresh milk. High temperature, short time, is the most common pasteurization method. In this process, the milk is heated to 161 degrees Fahrenheit for just 15 seconds. Then, the temperature of milk comes down to 39 degrees Fahrenheit. As a result, milk's shelf life extends to 25 days. It relies on a continuous flow system with plate heat exchangers, which efficiently transfer heat from hot water or steam. Milk passes through narrow channels between thin metal plates, ensuring rapid heating and cooling. After heating, milk is held in a sized tube to maintain the required temperature. Automated controls monitor time and temperature, guaranteeing pathogen reduction. HTST preserves nutrients while offering high throughput. It's energy efficient, producing safe, fresh tasting milk for large scale operations. On the other hand, UHT or ultra high temperature pasteurization rapidly heats milk to around 280 degrees Fahrenheit for merely two seconds. It destroys all microbes in the milk and extends its shelf life 40 to 60 days. This extreme method uses specialized tubular heat exchangers or steam infusion systems, followed by rapid cooling. Although nutrient retention is generally high, delicate flavors may be lost due to higher heat. UHT systems require robust controls to handle intense temperatures and pressures safely. They suit large-scale producers and regions with limited refrigeration offering convenience and a longer shelf life without spoilage. UHT milk is aseptically packaged, allowing it to remain shelf-stable at room temperature for extended periods. In the pack, milk and other milk products can remain preserved for four to six months without refrigeration. These aseptic pack consist of six layers. The first layer is polyethylene, which blocks moisture. Layer two is made of paperboard, which provides strength for the pack. The next layer is polyethylene, which acts as an adhesive material for the next layer. The fourth layer is aluminum, which acts as a barrier against light, air, and odor. The fifth layer is of adhesive polyethylene. The final layer is made of food-grade polyethylene. It seals the flavor of the product. Now comes the most thrilling part transforming ordinary milk into sweet, creamy, condensed milk. It happens in giant vacuum evaporators where sugar is precisely added, making up about 40 to 45% of the final mix. This isn't just for sweetness, it's crucial for preservation. The evaporators remove nearly 60% of the water at low temperatures, keeping the milk's natural flavor intact and avoiding any burnt taste. Next, homogenization steps in. Fat molecules are carefully broken down and evenly distributed, ensuring the condensed milk has that irresistible, velvety smooth texture. This process prevents separation and maintains consistent quality for your favorite recipes. Finally, the condensed milk is cooled and allowed to crystallize. This crucial step stabilizes sugar molecules, preventing lumps and ensuring smooth, consistent texture. Expert technicians monitor every detail to achieve perfection. But wait, there's another star in this story, the containers. Ever wondered why condensed milk typically comes in shiny stainless steel cans instead of plastic? Stainless steel is super durable, incredibly safe, and fantastic at keeping air, light, and bacteria out, which preserves that delicious flavor and freshness. Creating these cans is a science itself, Stainless steel sheets are carefully shaped into cylinders, welded securely, and polished to perfection. Every single steel can undergo intense cleaning, sterilization at 121 degrees Celsius, and rigorous inspection to ensure they're spotless and bacteria-free. 
Plus, stainless steel is fully recyclable, making it environmentally friendly and sustainable. Cheese is another product of milk that is largely consumed worldwide. According to USDA's semi-annual Dairy, World Markets, and Trade Report, global cheese consumption reached 47.7 billion pounds in 2024. The leading countries in condensed milk consumption included the United States, 994,000 tons, the Netherlands, 599,000 tons, and Peru, 541,000 tons which together accounted for about 34% of global consumption. Cheese production in factories follows a series of well-controlled steps designed to transform milk into a consistent, high-quality product. The process starts with fresh milk collected from dairy farms. In a factory, the milk is first tested for quality and then pasteurized, heated to a specific temperature, to eliminate harmful bacteria while preserving the milk's essential proteins and fats. Sometimes the milk is also standardized, meaning that its fat and protein content is adjusted to create a uniform base for cheese production. Next, specific starter cultures are added to the milk. These bacteria ferment the lactose into lactic acid. The increasing acidity not only begins to develop the cheese's flavor, but also creates the ideal environment for the next step. After the milk has acidified to a certain level, rennet, an enzyme, is added. Rennet causes the milk proteins to coagulate, forming a gel-like structure that separates into solid curds and liquid whey. This curdling step is crucial for defining the texture of the final cheese. Once coagulation is complete, the solid curd is cut into small pieces using specialized tools. Cutting increases the surface area which allows more whey to drain out. The curds are then gently heated and stirred, a process sometimes called cooking the curd, to further expel whey and achieve the desired firmness. The whey is drained off, and the curds are transferred into molds. In many factory processes, the curds are pressed to consolidate them into a solid mass. Salt is added at this stage to enhance flavor, help with moisture control, and act as a preservative. Depending on the type of cheese, the molded curd may be aged under controlled temperature and humidity conditions. Aging or ripening allows enzymes and bacteria to develop complex flavors and textures. For cheeses meant to be eaten fresh, this aging step might be brief or skipped entirely. Finally, the finished cheese is packaged for distribution. This standardized, controlled process in factories ensures that each batch of cheese has a consistent taste, texture, and quality, making it suitable for both everyday consumption and further culinary applications. If you enjoyed uncovering this fascinating factory journey, smash that like button, subscribe, and stay tuned for more amazing insights behind your everyday favorites.